Hello everyone, so I welcome you in the second lecture on GFR. In this we will see how is GFR regulated, okay? So now a part of GFR regulation was that we saw earlier that uh, which hormones or autocytes have effect on GFR. Now we will see some mechanisms that are operating to control GFR, okay? And as if I have told you that we will have a quiz if we get a great number of uh, students watching this videos. So I am not sure when it will be right now. But you can join this group. I will post the link there of the quiz wherever, whenever it will take place and all the details required. So let's begin with regulation of GFR. Okay, guys. So in the regulation of GFR, there are basically two kinds of regulation. One is regulated by your mesangial cells. Okay. And this is what I have already told you in the previous video regarding the nitric oxide, endothelin and all those factors. Okay. So mesangial cells have been covered. And now the second type of regulation of GFR is via autoregulation so what is autoregulation autoregulation is basically consisting of two components first is your myogenic autoregulation and then is your tubuloglomerular feedback okay now sometimes these terms might uh, you know seem complex to you but it is very easy just read here myo muscle genic okay due to muscle whatever autoregulation is happening so first of all let's focus on this thing so what is myogenic autoregulation guys so basically what happened that this is all related to your calcium and your muscle contraction. Now what happens that basically this is your blood vessel and you know that whenever the blood flow will increase in the blood vessel, there will be stretching of the blood vessel. Okay. So now what we have to do is we have to bring some, you know, contraction of the blood vessel because the blood flow is increasing very rapidly. And if it keeps stretching, then it will be very detrimental. The GFR will increase very high. Okay. So now what you have to do is you have to stretch whenever the va vascular wall will stretch it will cause increased movement of calcium ions okay so now whenever there will be increased movement of calcium ions you very well know that calcium ions is responsible for contraction so this will lead to basically contraction of that particular vessels okay now that vessel which was stretching now has been contracted the resistance has been increased so no matter how much you know you keep giving the blood it will resist those changes and automatically it will prevent the excessive stretch of the vessel and it will you know raise the vascular resistance because now it is contracted and now this will prevent increase in renal blood flow and gfr in the particular mechanism and this is known as auto regulation okay so automatically your muscles are contracting in order to you know save your vessel so this is myogenic auto regulation now the next thing which i want to tell you is tubuloglomerular feedback okay so now again don't worry with the word just break it off tubulo glomerular feedback okay so now let's see what does this mean now in that previous part you remembered only calcium in this you have to remember only sodium chloride okay so now whenever there will be changes in sodium chloride concentration this will help in regulation of gfr so where where will be the sodium chloride you know concentration play an important role it will play an important role in this macula densa group of cells. Okay. What are these macula densa cells? Let's see. So basically this is your JG complex. As I have told you, we will discuss relevant anatomy whenever needed. So this macula densa cells are there in the initial portion of your distal tubule. This is your distal tubule. And in the initial portion, you can find your macula densa cells. Also there is, you know, juxtaglomerular cells nearest to, you know, efferent and efferent arterial. But right now, what is our major you know focus of discussion is macula densa so now what happens whenever there will be increase in gfr you guys can understand that there will be an increase in you know nacl concentration reaching to macula densa as well as whenever there will be a decrease in concentrate decrease in gfr the nacl concentration which was reaching macula densa will also decrease okay so now let's see what happens further so now basically you know that macula densa are specialized group of epithelial cell in distal tubule that comes in close contact with afferent and efferent arterial. That's not an issue. What I'm talking about is case one. Now your arterial pressure has decreased. So this has lead to a fall in glomerular hydrostatic pressure. Okay. We have discussed all these terms. I hope things are clear to you. This will lead to GFR decrement. Okay. GFR come ho gaya. To jo so NACL concentration reach kar raha hai macula densa pe. So the macula densa has decreased NACL means uh, has the NACL uh, reaching in less amounts. Then what does this will do? Now from here you have to divert it to two mechanism. First of all it will lead to increase in renin. And now this renin will you know increase angiotensin 2. 
and from that table i have already told you what will angio tensin do engine angio tensin to do it will basically you know constrict your efferent arteriole and whenever it will constrict its resistance will increase hai na and now the blood won't go there in fact gfr will increase okay so by this mechanism your gfr will start to increase and automatically your glomerular hydrostatic pressure jo kam ho raha tha us pe negative feedback gaya that means it has increased okay so now your arterial pressure is decreasing but it is giving a greater feedback to you know increase the glomerular hydrostatic pressure okay now let's see the second mm -hmm. mechanism now whenever there is less macula densa reaching uh, less nacl reaching to macula densa this will decrease afferent arterial resistance okay this will decrease the afferent arterial resistance and theory behind it is that it contains golgi complex your macula densa and this will release certain substances okay so now you can understand that afferent arteriole ka resistance has been decreased so now what will this lead to basically more and more blood will pump and gfr will try to increase and again it will have a negative effect on your glomerular hydrostatic pressure you know saving your kidney so this is all you need to know regarding this particular topic now the second case could be increase in arterial pressure so in increase arterial pressure again gfr will increase more concentration of nacl will you know reach there now this will lead to secretion of a very important substance adenosine and this will lead to vasoconstriction and obviously the gfr will then fall so this is all in all you need to know regarding your entire tubular glomerular feedback okay guys so i hope things are clear now this is the third mechanism very shortly given in guyton what they have told you is if protein ingestion is increased this can also lead to changes in gfr how it will lead to increase in amino acids leading to more proximal tubular amino acid absorption reabsorption now whenever reabsorption will increase nacl will also increase and then the same mechanism of your macula densa will you know happen and then you will have macula densa feedback given to this particular topic so this is all in all you need to know regarding uh, glomer tubular glomerular feedback more important is the first two cases and myogenic auto regulation so i hope things are clear to you now this is my question what is the substance released in increased arterial pressure i have not written it there but i have explained it to you i hope things are clear and just keep learning and you can refer any of your book if you wish to uh, visit so thank you so much stay safe stay healthy